All right, hi guys. We're gonna try it again from my end. <laughs> Since we're having so much trouble uh, getting it, uh, <laughs> getting it uh, the other way, we're gonna try this direction. Um, hopefully you guys can see me. I'm trying to uh, move back and forth with uh, a live viewers to request. Hi Jess, how's it going? Um, let me see. Thanks for hanging with us as we figure this out. Uh, we are excited to talk to you about this stuff, uh, even though our technology seems to be working against us. Um, all right, Nikki, if you can see me, uh, let me know. I tried to send you an invite, but it looks like if you're watching, I have a function where I can bring you together. Uh, so bear with us, guys. <laughs> oh, we're trying. We're trying. Uh, your viewers. Allow your viewers to request. Um, for some reason, I can't see Nikki viewing, and I don't know why. I sent her an invite. We'll see if it works this way. But here's what we'll do. Since we've had a couple of misfires here, um, I'll at least uh, aha, bring them on camera. Let's try this. Aha. That's that's weird. Okay, let's try. Work. It says it's adding. It's gonna. Whoa! Oh, here we go. I don't know why it wasn't working before. It's crazy. Well, oh, the Facebook gods were against us. It's all right. Oh my gosh, right? Okay, so now we got one second. Let me switch this. Whoop. I gotta switch my camera. Okay, there. <sighs> okay, hi. <laughs> now I can't get rid of these comments. How do I get rid of comments? Oh my gosh. Uh... Nah, you know, I don't know it's okay. <laughs> we're, we're both on here. We got that far. Yeah, let's go. I, that I, did it, I did a little accident. It's like, do you want to cancel? It's like, no. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh, finally. Okay, so I'm having a day. Heather, <laughs> Heather, Miss Heather, it is going to be like 90 in Buffalo. What is the weather where you are? I can't believe it's hotter in Buffalo than it is in Israel. How often does that happen? It's actually gorgeous today. We had rain, like one of our last rains of the season. Like it, it's like, it doesn't, it literally does not rain all summer. So we had like a, a late season rain earlier this week and it really cooled things down. So like I'm over, I'm like on the other side of the camera, like there's the bay. So like this beautiful wind is coming off of it. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's gorgeous here. So I'm sorry that Buffalo is hot and miserable. It is hot. <laughs> Okay, it's May and it's supposed to get up to ninety. I am sweating. We don't have central it's air. In New York. Yeah. In New and York, what's happening? I'm dying. So anyway, I totally believe in um, climate change. <laughs> I don't care what anybody. I do not recall these kinds of temps when I was a kid in May. I just don't. So. <laughs> We actually had that last week. Last week we had scorchers. We were like 105 here, oh and they're God. like that. Even for Israel, even for Israel, that's high. So, so speaking of Israel, why don't you tell? Okay, so hi everybody. Um, I'm so excited <laughs> to say that uh, this is completely unscripted. If you can't tell, um, I like to wing it so we get our personalities. Heather, when did we meet? Like it's been a year now, right? Yeah, something close to it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we met through a mutual business coach, Alyssa J. Dillon, who's awesome. Um, and we just kind of have kept in touch through the year. And you know, we're both we are both go getters. We are trying to get our businesses up and running. And come to find out, Heather is also a watercolor artist. Now, I have a couple questions for you myself. But what I want to say is, before we get into all that, I she decided well during coronavirus she started to do tutorials on her youtube and i was like oh hey not only is she a good artist but she can actually teach too because sometimes people can't teach it's, it's hard um like i'm not i'm not the best at it myself so i have the brush babies boxes that she gets, and i said hey heather i love your style i love that you're patient you are you 
what would you say if you did some lessons for me? And she graciously accepted. And just excitedly. Yeah, and just completed her first box. So I'm really happy to announce that her and I are collaborating on Brush Babies now. It's super exciting. She, um, her artwork is her artwork. It's still under her name and everything, but we are, she is allowing me to have some of the pieces that she's doing the video for a tutorial on to send out to you guys so that you can paint. So what's awesome about this is she's got a different style than I have so that, so we can bring new, I fit one type of person, one type of customer where Heather can fit somebody else and her teaching style will be slightly different. So it'll help bring a variety uh, to you guys, which is ultimately what I want in the end. I want to, I want you to have the ability to learn yeah, watercolor, and I'll be doing primarily color pencil. Um, get you guys up and running so that hopefully you take off and start creating your own masterpieces. Uh, so, super, super excited about that. Yay! Uh, okay, so with that said, Heather, I want everybody to get to know you. Um, so, my question, my first question is we're going to talk about where you are and stuff like that. But I was curious do you do anything other than color? Do I do anything other than what? Watercolor. Uh, artistic a, wise, artistically. Artistic wise, um, I mean, I've dabbled. Like when I was, uh, so I'm from Columbus, Ohio, originally, and when I was there, I actually did do uh, the wine and canvas classes as a teacher. So, oh. I, so I used to teach uh, acrylic classes uh, there and at uh, and at another gallery in uh, Dublin, Ohio, too, for nice. a short period. So, but honestly, when I'm at home, it's just like. I did acrylic because that's what's popular in those classes. Watercolor is my first love, and right. it's what I do. All of my pieces I've been in galleries are watercolor. Everything I do at home is watercolor. That's yeah, my main I, jam, honestly. I thought maybe you did acrylic because in your video, you mentioned acrylic painting a couple of times. So obviously somebody who's done acrylic would know about that, that sort of thing. So I was like, hmm, I wonder what else she's done because not, I've known you for a year, but I don't know, uh, you know, everything. So it's like, oh, I wonder if she has done other things in the art. So that's really interesting. I didn't know that you taught in the paint. Yeah. yeah that's really cool. Um, so <laughs> tell us a little bit about, so you mentioned earlier you're in Israel. So you live, you were born and raised in Ohio. How did that all come about? <laughs> uh, back in 2016. I was traveling with my sister and her boyfriend, and by chance, uh, we were down in Florida visiting family. We went one afternoon to a uh, one of those, you know, like obstacle courses, like up in the trees. Mm -hmm. um, and it just so happened that these two guys in front of us were moving kind of slow, and they're about my age. And then I heard, heard them talking a language I didn't recognize. And so I'm a social chick, so I, you know, it was a good excuse to be like, "Hey, what's right. going on? What language are you speaking? Where are you from?" They're like, "Oh, we're from Israel." And oh. so, and now, three and a half years later, I'm living in Israel with one of those Israelis. That's awesome! <laughs> I cannot believe it. That is so cool. So, okay, so I have a question about that. So, so was he, so this was like a vacation you guys were on? So, so where was that? I'm sorry, I missed it. No, it's okay. Uh, it was in Florida. Florida. So, so by chance. So I was a thousand miles away from home. and Right. Yeah. So by chance, the two of you ended up in this location, right? And then, exactly by chance. yeah, so tell me, so how did that, um, so you went back home, we went back home. Uh, we, we did see, well, we had so much fun with them in the high ropes course that we're like, let's go get beers afterwards. We'll never see each other again. <laughs> and then after the beers that first time, we we're like, we'll never see each other again. Let's go out again tomorrow night. <laughs> And then they're just like, we're still in the U.S. for another month. We'll come up and go to the, the Cedar Point Roller Coaster Park in Ohio with you. We'll never see each other again. Oh, my God. And so then after that, we realized, yeah, we're going to see each other again. I love it. Oh, that's like great. I love uh, love stories that happen that way. It's like to me. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I'm not necessarily, I don't really necessarily believe in like fate stuff. But when I hear stuff like that, I'm like. Well, there's fate. <laughs> you know, it's meant to be. So that's really, really cool. So you are now in Israel, and your your main job is also creative. You are starting a copy business, right? Copy. Yeah. So yeah. So I do copywriting, content marketing, um, 
what's funny is the clients I do it for, it doesn't sound very sexy or creative. I usually do writing for uh, bookkeepers and accountants, but you know, they're really brilliant with numbers, but of course, usually if you're good with numbers, you're not good with words. So um, I used to do that, you know, that was like my job through college and uh, for like 10 and then like, you know, several years afterwards. So I'm just like, oh, I have that crossover where, you know, like I went to school for journalism and I used to be a bookkeeper and I need to work online now because I'm in a foreign country and I'm not allowed to work here because I don't have a job here for seven months. So that's how that all came to this. And it's like, it's growing, it's taking off. It's, it's great. So again, it's almost, uh, you know, you worked hard, but at the same time, you couldn't work. So it opened up these opportunities for you that you probably wouldn't, would have overlooked before. Yeah. yeah right? Absolutely. So I'm trying to convert Heather to being a full-time artist. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> She's working on it. She's working on it. I'm working on it. Getting her to just drop all that other stuff and just paint all day. But, you know, time will tell. We'll see. So out of both, out of the writing and the art, what is your favorite? I love them for different reasons and almost, I don't know if you ever feel this like with your, with your art, but there are some days where it's just like, I like that the painting sometimes is just less pressure because I'm not depending on it to, to, to give my living. So that's kind of why sometimes I, I love the writing and I appreciate it, but it also comes with that pressure of this is what gives me a living. Uh -huh. um, so it makes it more of that, like, this is my responsibility, you know, creative thing. Right. Like painting it's just like oh I can just do it you know here and there and I'm, I'm not relying on it yeah um, so but I don't know I, I love them both for different reasons honestly yeah yeah were you told when you were younger and maybe this is not the experience you had obviously you probably did art I assume when you were younger yeah okay. <laughs> yeah were you told or did you feel like it's it was something that you couldn't pursue when you got older as a career or not? Um, writing was always the thing I was told I was good at. Um, and it just like never crossed my mind, I think, to like have like a visual art career. So even for example, when it came to my writing, um, even that I tried to be as practical as possible. So it's just like I was always good at writing as a kid, did well in the writing classes. Um, and I made sure to pick a major that had the best business prospects. I didn't want to give up writing completely, but it's like, okay, I don't want to be an English teacher, so I'm going to pick journalism because then at least that's like a respectable or professional sure. writing degree. Sure. So I think that probably was the, the mindset for me. But then you ended up in something entirely different, right? Didn't you, weren't you, didn't you end up doing bookkeeping? I did. Um, that was like, you know, the job in, that I did in college, you know, working at a law firm doing bookkeeping for them. It just kind of happened, you know. I've always been you know, good with details like that. So it just, you know, that one just kind of happened. Okay. Um, and it was really good for those transitional periods in my life. So, you know, when I'm going through college, it's something that doesn't require a lot of, you know, upper mental skills. Um, when I was going through like my divorce, it was something I didn't require a lot of upper mental skills. It was something where I could just have a career um, to support through these stages but whenever I would come out of those stages it's just like I can't I got I got now that I'm like past this transition I gotta find I get something it. else it's not where it's supposed to be yeah it was just, it's the same for me I um I get that whole like to be creative you have to be in the right state of mind it's really hard to be creative if you're going through turmoil or anything like that you can but then your creativity tends to be a little disturbing <laughs> like yeah. Like sad. Well, <laughs> well, on that that note, that actually watercolor was actually a very important thing for me. As like uh, as my, my my first marriage like fell apart, um, I actually we were very lonely, removed. So this is very personal, but part of why you know I'm I'm self taught as a watercolor artist, but part of why I got so good so fast is um, my my husband at the time and I were very isolated. So we had all this time at home where we weren't actually spending time together. I wanted to do something creative. Um, for some reason writing he felt was too removed from him but he was okay with me doing like art projects right so I dabbled around with different like art mediums it's like well maybe pastels maybe color pencils but watercolor is where it just like really just grabbed me and so while he's working on his stuff um, like his engineering projects or his little like motors and things like that um, I'm on the couch for like three four hours every night and I'm just painting and painting and painting and painting 
we go out on the weekends. That's the thing I want the store I wanted to go to, the supplies. I yeah, to get. Me too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I uh, that was actually a really beautiful thing that came out of a very sad thing, you know, like I was home and lonely and wanted to make something good. And thankfully I was able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I can do, I, when I'm in those moments, I can definitely be creative, but it's a very different type of creativity. Um, so it, it's a little darker on my end. And, and same with like poets and everything, right? When they're creative during those really emotional times, their stuff tends to be about, of course, about what you're going through and how you're yeah. going to through it. So um, yeah, it's really interesting. What I find interesting too, and I see it with you as well, is I see a lot of creative people in the arts that went through financial industry. Um, and I think there's got to be some kind of correlation there because I was in, I did administrative assistant for a fi uh, financial advisor, and um, I am a creative person, too. And obviously, it couldn't sustain me. I had to get out and do my art. You know, that's what I re was really passionate about. But there's something about the uh, rules, I think, of those industries where you can play the rules, and there's not a whole lot of high-level thinking. And I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just saying it's it's easier you have numbers they're facts they're they're they can't vary right it's the truth and then when you're being creative there's a lot of um you have to be able to break the rules sometimes that's hard and scary so the fact that you could play in the rules and then i could have the art at home where i was free was a great balance but then i, I over time i could never stay in that profession i see a lot of artists around me and i don't know if you have are in very organized uh, uh, jobs, but are very, which I find really interesting. Interesting. I'm trying to think of like my uh, artistic friends. I have one who's like she's a an amazing ceramic artist, but she and then she teaches art for elementary school kids. She's an amazing teacher for them. Mm -hmm. I have another friend, he's done like administrative um, jobs. Like she worked in an art supply store and did great at it and loved it. Um, on the side of being an artist, very, very smart person. Sure. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of other like artists who come from financial. I actually just talked to a for the copywriting thing. I actually just talked to a, a this beautiful uh, paint pour alcohol ink artist, and she, I think, actually does bookkeeping during the day. Yeah, and think about the teacher and the store and uh, clerk or manager. They both are very organized positions. As a teacher, you have you have rules and you have to live within those rules. So it's it's really interesting to see. You know, most people think artists are super flighty and they can't get their crap together. But most of the artists I've seen are like incredibly organized, live in these, you know, have these careers with these kind of rents around them, which is crazy. They're not like what you imagine, like the hippie dippy, you know, <laughs> type, you know, the cliche artist. I guess. Say. So I just, I, I have always thought that was really interesting. I, the more I meet artists, the more I see that trend, which is, uh, I, there's got to be something there. There's got to be something with the brain. No, I think you're right. And I think also when you know the artist too, it's just like in order to get to that point. So, so the, the, the big thing I had to learn, like when I came like to Israel and had to like work specifically online, I was like, okay, I have these skills. But I was just like, but for some reason, it feels like something's missing. I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, sales and marketing and business. Like, yeah. I don't have those skills. And right. so that was like the, this big missing piece for me that I had to learn. Right. I mean, you know, artists can be extraordinarily gifted, you know, at whatever their medium or mediums are. And but if they're missing that part, forget it, you know, exactly. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe the reason why the, the, the artists that succeed is that they have this kind of like, they had that part of their personality that helped them get up to that, you know, bring that business sense, bring that organization in. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, so enough about that. We, we went on there. But I want, I want you to tell us about your special, um, when you paint, you use a special type of water. So tell us about that. Special type of what? Water. Water? Oh, for some of my pieces I do, yes. For the brush babies, of course, I can't. Right. Um, <laughs> But, uh, okay, so, okay, so, for example, I grew up, like, you know, like, I was raised a Baptist, and so all my life I was raised with these stories of, you know, like, of Israel. You know, you hear about Jesus walking on the Sea of Galilee, you know that, you know, the, you know, the, the Mediterranean Sea is right here, 
um, you know, the Jordan River is, you know, runs through this. So they, they, like these places, these stories have like this deep, almost like fairy tale embedment in our minds. And it's still crazy to me where it's just like when I drive home from work, Nikki, I drive past uh, an exit that says to Nazareth. Yeah. That still is super weird to me. So crazy. <laughs> I don't think like, I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I'm able to see this, you know, like as a, an American from a Christian upbringing. And so I was just like, you know what? One day after I got out of one of my Hebrew classes, which is a bear, by the way, um, it happened to be right there on this, this bay that goes right to the Mediterranean Sea. So I picked up some of the salt water and I started painting with it. And I was painting specifically pictures of Israel, like the palm trees, the landscapes. Sorry, I'm right in like the main road here next to the building, so you're going to hear maybe an ambulance. You may get the treat of an ambulance at a certain point. That happened on my live earlier today. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, and so I've gotten to visit the Sea of Galilee, and um, I just really love this connection between the waters of these places and getting to use them in, you know, specifically watercolor art. So it was a lot of fun, not only just to play around with using salt water, because it behaves differently. So I played around with that. And that's a cool, interesting thing. But also just to bring that extra level of connection between the subject of the piece and the material that you use to paint the piece with. Um, so like when I actually, actually, when I came back to visit in the States, the very noisy pro behind me. <laughs> um, when I came back to the States in Christmas, um, I had a lot of pieces where I had painted them with water from the Sea of Galilee or from the Mediterranean. I asked people, you know, back home, like, you know, would you guys be interested in buying them if I brought them home with me? And I had tons of people sending me messages and like that just there's something about that handmade, that connection, that physical property that just. I loved it, and then I brought it home, and other people loved it, too. It was great. I think it's a really good idea. Are you going to continue to do some pieces like that? I am. I'm still trying to figure out what to do when it comes to the international shipping, because, for example, while I was here a couple of months ago, um, I helped my dad out with a, with a, this piece for a charity that he was doing for work, so he really wanted me to make something for him. It was a, a landscape of the Sea of Galilee with water from the Sea of Galilee, and it was beautiful, but getting it back, shipping it to him was uh like 65 dollars or something like that to get it there like a week so that's the big thing i'm trying to figure out what to do with you were know you, the were you shipping my frame no oh my no. Goodness. wow that's crazy yeah so yeah and then it's and then it's no joke and then like you know they were asking me you know like well is this you know for profit or is this a gift because they would have charged me more if it had been something I was selling you know like professionally so I was like well it's technically a gift um so that's a that's that's an obstacle I need to figure out because of course what makes those pieces special is that they're original you know maybe I can go the route of saying you know like the original is painted with the water here's a print of it and find a way to do like digital downloads or something. But the people who want this stuff are internationally shipping. Right. And then it becomes an extra prohibitive price. I don't know. So that's something that's, that's my biggest problem right now when it comes to those pieces. Right. Right. I can completely understand that. That's, that's insane. That's a lot of money. I mean, I knew it was up there. But it didn't, I mean, how big was the piece? Uh, like eight by 10. Wow. Yeah. See, I would, I would imagine 65 for something, you know, 16 by 20 or something. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. And then like, like I did it through like, cause I needed to be there like in a week or something like that. So I did do it through like uh, FedEx or UPS or something like that. But That's yeah, but even, even if I didn't, even if I didn't need it there, you know, even giving it, you know, like that extra week, it did. <laughs> wow. That's nuts. So if anybody out there has any ideas for Heather shipping, let her know. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, tell me. I want to know. <laughs> what would you like to say to a, any budding artist out there? Somebody just starting. Uh, what would be your advice? Any budding artists who are just getting started. Um, the first thing that pops into mind is just like, if you want to have your business succeed online, if you want to actually, you know, like sell things and have this be a meaningful part of your income or your full income, um, I trust that whoever is a budding artist is already happily and easily pursuing more lessons about what they love, which they should. But if they want to succeed in that business sense is to find help, find a course, find something to help them with the sales and marketing. So it's like, I want them to succeed and in order for them to succeed and get their work out there, 
um, make sure to learn that stuff too. It's not gross. It's not distasteful. It's not wrong to make money from your artwork. And the better you do with that, uh, the more you're able to share your art with the world. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that definitely was a big growing point for me. And the more I learned about it, the more grateful I am that I, that I know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would completely agree with that. And don't, don't feel dirty because you charge money for your art. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many people are like, oh, it's, I should give it away. I should do this. Because that's what we've been told our whole lives. And that's not the way it has to be or should be. It's a skip to get something else that should be paid for. It. So. Yeah, there's there's a book. I'm just I need to I'm just starting to reread it. It's by Jeff Goins. Uh, Real artists don't starve. Yeah, I do, I read that. So like her, yeah. So like like and like oh yeah, I I figured you did, but just like for the sake of the video or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. They, like there's records that Michelangelo, you know, wasn't you know like forgotten in his time. Michelangelo did very well financially. He was rich. And look <laughs> and look at the beautiful and look at the beautiful things he made. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And he charged he charged for it and he got paid very well for it. So yeah. It's, yeah. Don't, don't sacrifice yourself. Uh, you'll just end up resenting the art, and it shouldn't be that way. Um, thank you so much, Heather. Where can people find your art? Uh, my art is both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my moniker, moniker, handle, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> my name on Instagram is Oxentinder, O-X-A-N-D-T-I-N-D-E-R, which I'm sure Nikki will helpfully share. Well, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So ox and tinder, why is that the case? Um, uh, I'm born April 30th, so I'm a Taurus. And one time I had a teacher call me a tinderbox, and I liked it. So I smushed the two words together and slapped, <laughs> slapped a white color logo on it. That's so, awesome. That's, that's the mystery. Uh, so, and then I'm also on Facebook, uh, ox and tinder watercolor there. Uh, find me wherever's most convenient for you. And just, uh, yeah. Looking forward to doing more uh, more stuff with you, Nikki. Yeah, I'm excited too. Uh, Heather and I are going to next work on some kids' version of, uh, you know, I call it Fresh Babies, but Paint With Me Kits. So that'll be coming out. Hopefully, we're both very bit busy, so we're just doing the best that we can. Um, hopefully, it'll come out within a month or so. And her, uh, she created, it's adorable, and I will share a picture of it in, in here. It's a wreath that you paint, and it says, wash your hands. And, it's, <laughs> you know, a little throwback to our coronavirus isolation that's been going on. And not only that, but it's just a great reminder to put in your bathroom or in your kitchen or anywhere you want. You can paint it yourself, hang it up. Uh, to wash your hands, people, wash your hands. Um, so I'll share that picture. It's not available yet. I just have to get a couple more supplies for the box but it'll be available within the week. So that'll be going up. And when it does, I will share it in the group here and on the website, it's an Etsy. So you'll see it around and uh, you'll want to get your box right away. I know it's going to sell out. So uh, post that. She did an awesome job. I'm really excited to share it. And she'll be in the group too. She's now an administrator in the group. So if you have questions or anything, either one of us can help you uh, help answer. So drop them in the group. Leave your comments, leave the artwork that you're doing, um, and just share with everybody, and it'll be fun. We're going to have a great time. So I'm really excited that we're collaborating and partner partnering up. It's going to be great. Me too. Me too. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And if you have questions for us or comments for Heather, leave them in the, the live here, and please share with friends and family. Get the word out for us. Uh, obviously, it's just the two of us. We're small little people, so we do, we need that marketing. We need that word of mouth. <laughs> All right. Yeah, exactly. Talk to you guys later. Thanks, Heather. Bye-bye.